Hi there, Zappa again for another little short video. Well, hopefully it's short. We'll see how that goes. Um, we're going to try this out. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the airbrush. Um, this is something I wanted to... Um, uh, the reason I want to talk about this is something that, as a painter, I wish I kind of knew a little bit beforehand and got the stuff earlier. Um, because it's a, it's a whole entire different technique for painting. Um, it has its own learning curve, of course. And, um, and if I learned ahead of time, maybe I'd have been using more airbrushing. Uh, I heard a lot of uh, painters out there say that airbrushing is probably the wave of the, the miniature uh, professional painting future. I'm not 100% sure of that, but um, I thought I'd talk about it anyways. I mainly use my airbrushing uh, for uh, priming and for base coating uh, for the most part, if I was going to do anything at all with the airbrush. Um, Although I have been kind of playing with it, getting finer and finer movements. Um, so we're just going to go over a little bit about the anatomy of an airbrush, uh, what to buy if you want to go for airbrushing, and uh, um, and maybe some uh, popular brands out there that uh, you may be interested in if you want to go in that route. And some safety type tips too. Um, just kind of real quick. Um, this is a uh, uh, one of the airbrushes um that i personally own it's uh um uh the pash pash <laughs> um airbrush um talon version um for the pretty much for um different types of airbrushes they come in different three different types there's of course the gravity fed which is the top one here um, which you put the paint or whatever you want on top here and it goes down um, and then it atomizes through here. Uh, that's one method. Another method that they uh, have is a side one, um, which I honestly don't see any benefit in. I don't, I've tried it before and I don't see any um, benefit over the gravity field. The other one is a siphoned one. And I would say if you're doing something that's a lot, um, like you're doing multiple shirts or something like that, or multiple large um, pieces, I, that's going to be kind of a waste, I think, of paint in that big, uh, it's a big uh, container that hooked up here that draws right into here um, and gets siphoned out as the air goes through. There's many different type of uh, um, airbrushes that are out there, but if you're looking for one, um, I would recommend, of course, uh, a gravity feather, like I said, um, and also there's different features for this thing besides the, um, of course, the push down, um, lock me mechanism and uh, pull back the trigger per se. Um, if you push it down and you can let some air out, pull it back, you start bringing pain in, um, as you're pulling back the needle. Um, that's one thing to kind of look for. Another thing is back here is you can actually adjust it. So that um, if you want it set, if you have a little problem with trigger control, pulling back and you want it, you're sometimes going too far, you can actually adjust this um, so that you don't pull back the trigger all the way. Let's see if I can do that here. See, I locked it completely. You can adjust it so you can only go back so far. Um, so that's one other thing that's, that's really nice about this type of an airbrush. Um, so if you got if you find the sweet spot and you want to keep it there, uh, then you adjust your uh, um, thing to go back to a certain point, and then it'll just stop automatically. Or if you want full, you just kind of loosen it up. I guess we could probably do a show you a close up of that, see how that works, real quick. <clears throat> See, we tighten it all up, you can't move it at all. You loosen it a little bit, and it moves a little bit. You can go a little more, and it goes all the way back. So that's how that works. It's pretty nice. Um, so that's it on that. Um, this little thing I have here, we'll go back to the main screen. This is a... Um, a, uh, a holder slash uh, cleaner or a thing where you can 
spray your um, air stuff in here. Um, this is quite nice to have around because it, it um, will not spray everywhere else in your whole entire place as you're trying to get this cleaned out. Now there's different methods of cleaning it and I'm not going to go over that right now. How to clean airbrush. Um, maybe later on in some other videos I'll be doing that. But I just wanted to show you the anatomy and what to look for. Um, other things to buy, of course, is a compressor. You need a compressor in order to move the air through the um, oh, through the airbrush here. This is an example of a compressor to come that um, comes with this type of company. Um, it has a tank and as well as the compressor on top. Now you could buy the ones with the compressor only, uh, but you're going to find that you're going to have more variation of your pressures. So you're not going to have a steady stream. You might all of a sudden cut off on you and you have to wait for the compressor to catch up. With the tank, it'll give you that uh, ability to um, give more equal pressure. And when the tank gets down to a certain point, the compressor will kick on to fill up the tank. So, um, so you got the compressor, you got the tank. I recommend getting like that. Now they, there's, you just can't go on your local um, hardware store and get a compressor because uh, they're getting get really loud if you buy those. These are mainly used for airbrushes only, and they're very um, reasonably quiet for the most part. You still don't want to do it in the middle of the night when your uh, spouse is trying to sleep, though. Um, trust me, that didn't work out very well. Um, but they're very nice, uh, nevertheless. Uh, things on uh, as you're looking for it, make sure you got a way to release the gas when you're done and you want to release it. You want to pull this little thing and it releases all the gas out. Um, and then at the bottom uh, is a port. And you want to make sure you have one that you're able to unscrew in there. Why? Because compressed air tends to have some humidity in it. And if you keep the humidity in there, it's going to uh, rust out your tank. And one day it's going to fail on you and it's not going to be pretty. Also the compressor, you have a regulator. And you can see in the regulator there's a clear thing on the bottom here. Um, this is for to collect moisture as well as it's, uh, the compressed air is coming out. The, the moisture goes down here and collects here so it's not getting into your paint and onto your mini. Of course you got the regular up here that you turn to be able to adjust um, your pressure as well. For a typical pressure for a, a mini um, for PSI that you want coming out into your airbrush, you generally want that around 20 PC, PCI, 15, 20 PCI. Uh, you can go up as high as 50, uh, but for just for painting wise, you want about that. If you're using primers or a thicker type of a substance, you want to go a little higher, like 50 PCI, uh, when you're adjusting for your airbrush. Other things to buy um, is, of course, uh, your uh, cleaner, uh, airbrush cleaner. So you can use that to uh, clean out the, the paint that's in your airbrush. Um, flow, flow improver, which helps your paint get out of the, the flow easier coming out of the, um, the nozzle. Um, and, of course, some thinner to thin out your paint a little more. The consistency you want your uh, paint going in there is about the same consistency of milk. Um, so it doesn't sit there and clog up your thing. Um, and there's different techniques we can use for this. Now, one thing about the airbrush too, um, since it atomizes the, the paint particles really well, another thing you want to make sure you buy, uh, for the most part, is a respirator. Um, something that's going to prevent you getting getting paint in your lungs because it does have that fine spray. And if you're really close, you're going to inhale some of that in paint. Although acrylic paints are not as toxic as most other paints, it's still going to cover your lungs. and It's just not going to be pretty. Um, also, um, I'll get that in a little bit. Like this one, you just kind of put on on there. Hey. 
make some adjustments. <laughs> Just like that. I like to say, I'm not going to sound like Bane all the, all the whole time now. <laughs> but um, I like this one in particular because, as you can see, it has a flip, uh, flip lever to be able to tighten and loosen. So if you want, as you're painting, you put it on. And then when you want to take a break, you just flip it off and you can breathe just fine. These are made for, these are helper filters um, that are used for painting in particular. So they're very thin mesh. Um, Is there a particular number? Uh, the number here... Um, the, I mean it varies by manufacturer. The, by manufacturer, of course. Um, these are better than the N95s. They're, they're rated for fumes. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, well, let's see. We talked about the cleaners, we talked about the airbrush, uh, we talked a little bit about thinning your paints. Um, um, we could talk a little bit about brands. There are many different brands out there uh, to be used. Um, the one I used um, is not really one of the top 10, but they work really well. <laughs> and for what I use it for, I like it. Um, they have different needle sizes. The needle is what's in here. Um, This is the needle point, but the needle's right in there. Um, to switch it to the other. people have pulled it over the black bottle one day, then it should be able to show the needle point pretty clearly. <clears throat> like right there? Yep, perfect. Yeah, there's the needle right there. Um, pretty long one, right? But it, what it basically does, it um, acts like your um, your stop point for paint um, for the when it comes to the nozzle. Um, so it pulls back, um, letting the air and paint come through. Um, there's different sizes of needles. Uh, this one's a 0.38, uh, um, millimeter. Um, typically it's, it's good for what I use for basically base coating and, uh, for, um, priming. Uh, typically if you want to do fine detail type work, you want to use somewhere like a point, uh, 0.15 to, uh, 0.2, um, for fine detail. Anything less than 0.15, you might have problems with uh, clogging. Uh, we have to frequently um, clean your uh, um, or clear your uh, um, your nozzle. Um, if you're using something like primer, you want to use something that's um, like 0.35 to 5, uh, 0.5, excuse me, uh, millimeters, so that um, that primer can get through and not clog up your uh, um, your needle, your nozzle. I think sometime I'll have to show you how to take one of these down. It's not that hard. Take it down all the way and clean it completely. For the most part, you don't need to do that. Um, you don't need to clean it thoroughly. Sometimes you just need to do is just clean up this area here, um, which is the, um, the cup of the reservoir. And um, um, sorry, I don't want to, can't do two things, can't chew bubblegum and walk at the same time, apparently. Um, where was I going with this? <laughs> you were just talking about most of the time you just need to clean the reservoir. Oh, yeah, clean the reservoir and the <laughs> nozzle. So basically, all I need to do is, um, you, you put your uh, airbrush cleaner in here, uh, you spray it, you stick it in your thing, you spray out all the cleaner, uh, take a paper towel, wipe it out, um, pour more cleaner in that, spray some more. Uh, while some cleaner's in there, you just hold it 
and you spray back or you, you bubble back, you bubble it up and that cleans it out and um, repeat the process. And basically this is the only area that you really need to be cleaning for the most part. Now sometimes paint will get back into here and that way you got to tear it all down, start using brushes and everything and then get it really clean. But um, yeah, that's pretty much in a nutshell about um, spray painting. Oh, some other brands. Uh, real quick, I'll just tell you the top 10. The best ones out there for the most part are um, Hater and Steelback. Steel, Steel, Steelback? Steelback? Ugh, gosh, Eric. Um, let's see. Uh, Iwata is another really great brand uh, that uses quite a bit. Um, uh, Badger is another good one. Um, and um, Apex, the ultimate version of that. Uh, the best one out of all of those, and the most pricey, is going to be the Harder and Steam Steamback. Um, we're talking for uh, brushes and so forth for this uh, type setup. Uh, for just the airbrush, it could be anywhere from $120 to um, uh, $250 just for the airbrush. And that. Um, you know, comes with a kit with uh, needles and so forth, but that's pretty pricey. Right now, this whole entire, uh, well, except for, I would say for the compressor and for the um, airbrush kit uh, that we have here, you can get it for $370 right now on Amazon. Um, I'm not gonna link it there because it's gonna change, I'm sure. And I'm sure they can get better or get it cheaper, but you can find kits with everything in there, compressor and airbrush all together, one lump sum, buy it all. And then you gotta buy all these rest of these accessories to help uh, help you with your painting. Um, uh, told you about safety. Um, let's see, for the fumes, if you're in an apartment, just be aware that you're atomizing um, stuff through your um, ports you are um, putting down to a fine mist. So the possibility of you um, like having little blood splatters everywhere could be very possible. But uh, if you have a big enough area um, and a, a good uh, good control, you should be able to contain it for the most part. There is a, um, a thing real quick. Um, I did bring it. Uh, I should probably should have set it up. It's a it's an actual box um, that I use that has a filter in it that can be uh, channeled to the outside. Um, Ooh, that's cool. And um, it's a it's a spray box basically, and um, I use that quite frequently with my stuff. Oh, and Joe's gonna help me out. Thank you so much, sir. This is the travel version, of course. Real easy. Sorry, I think this video is coming a little longer than I anticipated. You're only about 18. Yeah, not too bad. Oops. Well loved. Just kind of real quick on it. Well, this is a spray box. I'm not gonna hook it up all the way. It does have lights in it um, that you can use um, to help light your area up. Um, you can see there's a filter in there that helps filter some of that paint out but even some fumes can be escaping. Even though acrylics are less toxic, you still want to make sure those fumes are going out. So this hose hooks up to the back of it and you just stick it out your window still and it pumps it right out. This is a great thing I use during the winter time. Do you have alignment with anything to keep the paint spraying all over it? To keep it clean? Yeah, I usually use like some paper on it um, um, 
Oh, what type of paper do I use? It has like a wax backing to it. So like parchment paper? Uh, yeah, like... I want to call it parchment paper. You buy it at an art cheese store. Glow. Huh? What, like cheese glow? <laughs> cheese glow. <laughs> no, it's, it's regular paper on one side, but it has a plastic coating on the back. Okay. So I use that. Or you can just use regular rolled um, up paper. Um, can you think of a... Um, like a locker? Hmm? Yeah, like a like a birth picture type, yeah. Yeah. Or any type of rolled paper, which is fine. Um something to help protect it a little bit, but you can see I got paint on it too. It's not perfect in the way. But for the most part, I'll just take something like this. And um line my uh thing in. It has a little bit of a wax coating on one side. And uh, regular paper on the other. I use this for about everything, not only for my painting, but I also use it for my computer um, building because I do water cooling. Where'd you get so. that paper? I got it at um, one of the hobby shops or one of the you know, hobby stores. I can't remember where. It was in the painting section. <laughs> so I wish I could tell you what. It looks a lot like what you're thinking. Yeah. I like the wax inside. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it kind of keeps the paper or the uh, paint contained. Right on. So, uh, I think I missed anything. Any questions or? No, you actually covered. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of a rough overview. Of course, there's a lot to it. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there. Of course, um, I probably do quite a few on my own, um, and uh, I welcome you to look at my um, uh, playlist and um, on mythicalfamily.com. Um, or excuse me, on the Mythical Family uh, YouTube and Twitch. And um, we're going to do a lot more. We're going to have a big uh, thing coming up. We're going to be doing a mini from uh, priming all the way through to the to the ceiling part of it. Um, I can't wait because that's going to be the next thing I do here pretty soon. <laughs> so, super awesome. Yeah, super awesome. Uh, I can't wait. So um, you may even see this in action a little bit. We'll see. Um, that'd be sweet. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm all done. If you got any questions or anything, uh, leave them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you.